My topic for today is cellular therapy for acute respiratory failure with a focus on mesenchymal stromal cells, or MSCs. This slide shows my disclosures. Uh, there are no conflicts for this presentation, a variety of support from NIH funds, as well as importantly from the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine for both our alpha stem cell clinic and recent support for our clinical trial to expand to UC Davis. Now, what do I do at work at UCSF? Well, I am a pulmonary and critical care physician working in the intensive care unit. I do, in addition, basic and clinical research into acute respiratory failure, primarily from the acute respiratory distress syndrome. I spend a good deal of my time running clinical trials in critically ill patients, and uh, the rest of my time is spent mentoring students, residents, fellows, and young faculty. Now, this slide is intended to give a brief overview, both visually and otherwise, of the acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as ARDS. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see a chest radiograph with bilateral pulmonary infiltrates, and on the right-hand side, you see proteinaceous edema fluid in the alveoli. This is a form of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. ARDS occurs in 200,000 patients annually in the U.S. with the chest radiograph, as I've shown you here, as well as uh, the criteria of having mild to moderate or severe hypoxemia with a PaO2, FiO2 ratio less than 300 and mortality ranges from 25 to 45%. The main etiologies are bacterial and viral pneumonia, sepsis, aspiration, and trauma. We have made progress with supportive treatment with lung protective ventilation, prone positioning, and a fluid conservative strategy. These have all improved clinical outcomes as shown in the citations below. However, as shown on this slide, many therapies uh, pharmacologic therapies have not been successful in improving clinical outcomes. Uh, there is mixed data on corticosteroids, but overall there has not been a consistent beneficial effect. And the rest of the agents listed here, including surfactant, prostaglandin, anticytokines, statins, ketoconazole, activated protein C, beta agonists, and others have not been successful, perhaps in part because they're single agent therapies. Now, the next slide provides, on the left-hand side, a visual idea of what are the pathways of injury in ARDS. And in this figure, we have modeled an alveolus, and on the left-hand side, it's air-filled, where you can see a normal macrophage, normal epithelium with a type 2 cell that produces surfactant, which is denoted by that white line, and then a normal capillary with oxygenated red blood cells. But on this side, you see the injured alveolus with pink protein-rich edema fluid, a loss of the epithelial barrier replaced by hyaline membranes, a uh, injured type 2 cell, and inflammatory cells in the alveolus, including neutrophils and alveolar macrophages and other pro-inflammatory factors. The primary lesion is over here at the capillary level, where you see these gaps between the endothelial cells, which allows protein-rich plasma to exude into the interstitial space of the lung and then translocate into the air spaces. Now, MSCs are attractive as a potential therapy for ARDS because they have multiple properties that may be beneficial in several of the different pathways of injury. They produce anti-inflammatory factors such as lipoxin A4, interleukin-1 receptor antagonist, IL-10, and macrophage-2 pro-resolving monocytes. Uh, they also can restore endothelial and epithelial barrier integrity by various pathways, including increasing type 2 cell regeneration. They can enhance alveolar and lung edema and fluid clearance. And interestingly, they even have antimicrobial properties. Now, the next slide just gives one example of one of our preclinical studies in which we gave MSCs to mice who had endotoxin lung injury. And you can see on the right-hand side the injury when the mice were treated just with control PBS. And on the left-hand side, the MSCs, you can see a much improved um, histologic section with less edema and fewer 
inflammatory cells. And this was borne out on a lung injury score, as well as measurement of lung edema being reduced with the MSCs. Similar studies showed an increase in survival and benefit in live bacterial pneumonia. Now, the next slide shows a novel preparation that we've used in our laboratory for several years. And what we have displayed here is a human lung, which we uh, receive from brain dead donors when the lungs are not transplanted. And the lungs arrive at four degrees and are in generally very good shape. And we then, if they are in a good shape, we set them up for perfusion uh, warm them with uh, to 37 degrees, cannulate the airways so they can be inflated with CPAP, and then add fresh blood to the circuit from one of us in the laboratory. And this constitutes a short-term model of lung injury. And in the studies relevant to MSCs, we've injured the lungs with endotoxin or live bacteria. And the effects were quite beneficial, providing preclinical evidence that this therapy might be beneficial in patients. This slide shows an example of the results of uh, one of those studies in which the uh, permeability of the lung vasculature is on the y-axis here. You can see that endotoxin or LPS increased at threefold and MSCs when delivered into the air spaces uh, reduced it and even the conditioned media did. And we found the same effect when we uh, measured the amount of pulmonary edema in the lung where the MSCs reduced the quantity of pulmonary edema, as did the condition media. In these same studies, we also measured the effects of live bacteria, and we again found that the MSCs reduced lung injury with the live bacteria. And in addition, as you can see visually here, MSCs, whether given in the bronchus or in the perfusate, increase the phagocytosis of the bacteria. And this is shown in um, graph form in the bottom part of the slide. So this was a novel discovery that MSCs can increase bacterial clearance. Um, and this has been uh, uh, confirmed by several other uh, laboratories as well. And the final preclinical model to just mention to you is our sheet model in which we created Pseudomonas pneumonia and sepsis and tested the effect of two doses of MSCs. This was a severe sepsis pneumonia model over 24 hours. And you can see in this slide that oxygenation as measured on the y-axis over 24 hours on the x-axis was markedly improved with two different doses of MSCs given one time. And these were human mesenchymal stem cells that are harvested from normal donors, cryopreserved, and then shipped to us for treatment. And you can see in red or green how the oxygenation was definitely improved with either five or 10 million MSCs per kilogram. The next slide shows that in these same experiments, the higher dose of MSCs resulted in a reduction in pulmonary edema in the lungs after 24 hours. Um, the red indicates the higher dose and it had a greater effect than the lower dose. So this is the one we selected for our clinical trials. This slide is just a quick summary of the mechanisms by which MSCs may be effective in the injured lung. They can reduce pro-resolving factors such as lipoxin A4, ANG1, and growth factors such as KGF. They actually can reprogram macrophages through these exosomes to be more pro-resolving as well as to be antibacterial. And they can even transfer mitochondria to injured epithelial cells to improve their function by increasing ATP levels. Now, the next slide shows you briefly uh, the results of our phase one trial, just nine patients to get the clinical application going, in which we tested for safety three different doses of MSCs in nine patients with moderate to severe ARDS, and there were no uh, safety issues. So FDA said we could advance to do a phase two trial which is shown on this slide, it was a multi-center, randomized, blinded, placebo-controlled trial. The MSC is given over one hour, 60 patients with two-to-one randomization, primary endpoints for safety, and efficacy endpoints for secondary, small trial. And uh, we measured biomarkers in the plasma and many BAL. This was published in 2018. And um, you can see um, on this slide, 
that plasma angiopoietin 2 declined significantly in the patients who received the MSCs. This is an important finding because angiopoietin 2 is a marker of endothelial injury and also a mediator. And it almost achieved a significance at a later tam town point as well. And in brief, the conclusions from this phase 2A START trial was that there were no infusion-related adverse events within six hours of infusion, as in the phase 1 trial. As I showed you, there was a favorable biologic effect in reducing ANG2 in the plasma. There was also data that suggested a trend for short-term efficacy of the MSCs and reducing lung injury is measured by the oxygenation index during the first three days of ARDS. Post hoc analysis indicated that MSC viability is an important factor in the clinical and biological effects in this small phase 2A trial. Now, the current trial that we are conducting is shown here, and it's called the STAT trial as opposed to the START trial. And this is a 2B trial of MSCs for trauma and non-traumatic causes of ARDS. It's multi-center, randomized, blinded, placebo-controlled. The study agent is given over one hour intravenously. The plan is to enroll 120 patients with one-to-one -one randomization. The primary efficacy endpoint is oxygenation index, and the patients will be stratified by trauma versus non-trauma and a PaO2, FiO2 of greater than or less than 150. Uh, we will measure biomarkers in the plasma, urine, and mini PAL, as well as RNA and DNA. And it's funded by the Department of Defense, NIH, and CERM. The next slide shows uh, the participating clinical sites for this STAT Phase 2B trial of MSCs for ARDS. Note the blue arrow here denotes two hospitals in San Francisco, uh, University of California, San Francisco, and Zuckerberg, San Francisco General Hospital. And we're adding, thanks to CIRM, uh, later this month, a, um, another center at UC Davis. Our other participating centers are University of Washington, Seattle, University of Texas, Houston, and Vanderbilt in Nashville. Uh, this slide just highlights the primary endpoint that I mentioned of oxygenation index, which will be measured at 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36 hours as our primary evidence of efficacy. What is the status of the trial to date? Well, in the four hospitals that have been active, we've enrolled 29 patients, 26 of whom were COVID-19 positive. Most of the patients were enrolled at UCSF and Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital, 22 of the 29 patients. Texas and Oregon have enrolled seven patients, and we're hoping to open Vanderbilt, University of Washington, Seattle, and UC Davis uh, in September. And then this slide is an important acknowledgement to so many individuals who have worked to make these trials possible, including my co-PI, Kathleen Liu, Medical Director of the ICU at uh, UC Parnassus, uh, Carolyn Hendrickson, who is Medical Director at San Francisco General Hospital, Dr. Pati Gotts, Dr. Calcutt, who'll be the PI at UC Davis, Dr. Kornblith, who's been a major part of this uh, trial, and we just want to thank the DSMB, Department of Defense, NHLBI, and CERM for the support. And finally, for the patients who consent to be part of these trials and the ICU nursing and respiratory care staff. Thank you very much.